Okay, so we're going to solve this problem where we're given a function f which satisfies this functional equation. We're given the value of f at 18 and 108, and we need to try and find the value of f at 72. So we'll start by seeing how we can use this functional equation to generate the value of f at different numbers. So we know the value at 18 and 108. And you could actually notice here that 108 is 6 times... 18. So we could use this functional equation now to generate the value of f at 6. So let's just write this out. We know f of 108 is equal to f of 6 times 18. So we can think of our 6 as being x and our 18 as being y. So we know that f of 108 is 36 and then we can write this as 6 times f of 18 plus 18 times f of 6 using the functional equation with 6 is x and 18 is y. So now we also know the value of f of 18 is 2, so 6 times f of 18, this is just going to be equal to 12. So we can take away the 12, we get 24 equals 18 times f of 6, and then dividing through by the 18, 24 over 18 simplifies to give us that f of 6 is going to be equal to 4 thirds. So we've managed to find the value of f at 6, but we need to find the value at 72. And this now becomes a matter of trying to work out how can we make 72 using multiplication or division from these numbers that we've started with, our 18, 108, and now we've got 6 as well. So we can think of this as 72 is 2 times 36, which we don't have either of these numbers yet, but we know that 36 can be made as 6 times 6. So now that we know f of 6, there's a path to finding the value of f of 36. And then once we've found the value of f of 36, because we know the value of 18 as well, we can use the fact that 36 is 2 times 18 to give us the value of f at 2. Then eventually we'll be able to combine these to make the value of f at 72. I will also show at the end a more systematic way of working with these kind of problems that doesn't rely on just seeing that 72 is 2 times 36 and so on, that would work more generally for more difficult or bigger numbers perhaps. So let's now just use this, 36 is 6 times 6, to find the value of f of 36. So f of 36 is f of 6 times 6, then using the functional equation x and y are both 6, so we've got 6f of 6 plus another 6 times f of 6, and we know that f of 6 is 4 thirds, we've got 12 lots of 4 thirds, and 4 thirds of 12 gives us 16 as our value for f of 36. So now we'll find the value of f at 2, and eventually the value of f at 72. And again, using our functional equation, this time with x is 2 and y is 18, we can set up an equation which can be solved to find the value of f of 2. So we know on the left-hand side, f of 36 is just 16 from before. Then we can write the right-hand side as 2 times f of 18 plus 18 times f of 2. And we know that f of 18 is just 2, so 2 times f of 18 gives us 4. So then taking away this 4, we get 12 equals 18 f of 2. So dividing through, 12 18 simplifies to 2 thirds as our value for f of 2. And now we're ready to find the value of our function at 72. So we can start off writing this as f of 72 is going to be f of 2 times 36. So we can use our functional equation with x is 2 and y is 36. So we get 2 f of 36 plus 36 times f of 2. So we know f of 36 is 16, so we've got 2 times 16 gives us 32. And we've also got 36 times f of 2, so 2 thirds of 36 is 24. So 32 plus 24 gives us 56 as our final answer then for what is the value of f of 72. Now we'll finish with a quick look at a more systematic way of going from 18 and 108 to 72, just to see how this sort of method could be generalised now. So we went with 18 and 108, and effectively at each step we were just multiplying and dividing by 18 and 108. So let's try and set this up as 18 to the power of a times 108 to the power of b equals 72, see what our powers of a and b need to be. And a really nice way to help us solve this equation, find suitable a and b, is to look at the prime factorization of each of these three numbers. 
So first of all, 18 is 2 times 9 or 2 times 3 squared. This all gets raised to the power of a. And 108, this is 27 times 4, so it's 2 squared times 3 cubed. And this is all again being raised to the power of b. And 72 is 8 times 9, so this is 2 cubed times 3 squared. So if we collect together our powers of 2 and our powers of 3, we get 2 to the a, and we've also got 2 squared to the power of b, so it's a plus 2b, and here we've got 3 to the power of 2a plus 3b. So then you can see, comparing our powers of 2 and 3, we're going to get some simultaneous equations, which you can now solve to find suitable a and b. So here, a plus 2b is going to be equal to 3, just from the powers of 2, and the powers of 3 give us 2a plus 3b is equal to 2. So then we can multiply both sides of this equation by 2 to give us 2a plus 4b equals 6. And then you can see comparing the different equations, we've got 2a plus 4b equals 6. We could subtract this equation now, taking away the 2a, the 3b, and the 2, and we see that b is equal to 4. Then once we've got the value b is 4, we can substitute this into either of our original equations. We get a is negative 5. So we've got a is negative 5 and b equals 4. So then this gives us our conclusion here is we actually need to do 72 is 18 to the power of negative 5 times 108 to the power of positive 4 gives us 72. But then to put it into a format where we'd be able to use our original functional equation, we would, instead of having the negative power, we could write this as 18 to the power of 5 times 72 equals 108 to the power of 4. And we could piece by piece work out the value of f of 108 squared, then f of 108 cubed, then f of 108 to the 4, and similarly with our powers of 18, and eventually we could get to the value of f of 72. But doing it this way, while it's more generalizable and more systematic, it does involve much bigger numbers, so the calculations would be much less manageable this way.